Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. If you want to text us here today, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. We're going to take some text message questions, 425-780-7566. Questions for me, Lance, Mike. You can also email me, f4wonline at gmail.com. And you can also follow me on old X at Brian Alvarez. And you can subscribe as well. It can be one of my Twitter followers. I only communicate with my my Twitter subscribers. I've, I've given up on the rest of you. No offense. But uh, it's a waste of my time, energy. No offense. I mean offense to about uh, 98% of the people that follow me for free on Twitter. I mean no offense to anybody who pays. It sounds horrible. Like, <laughs> I will only talk to you on Twitter if you pay me. But for those people that are actually paying, it's like, this is totally worth it. Like, we have real conversations and talk to each other and connect and pictures and news. And it's 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 a, it's a um, you got to pay to get into a club, right? Huh? Uh-huh. So, yeah, it's just, uh, it's it's a small fee for civility. That's it. So, anyway. I'm trying to think of a takeoff of Club Shay Shay for you, but I can't think of any. And we had Okada and Swerve, champion versus champion, which was exactly, exactly what I thought would happen. A nothing match, ending when people ran in, and then everybody involved in Blood and Guts brawls. And that's what happened. This Okada's making his money, brother. <laughs> He's just making his money. Easy money. Yeah. He's Speaking of, he, man. he's into Monet, too. Money. Yeah, some, somebody said on Twitter, it's like they've turned him into Long Duck Dong from those old 80s uh, movies with Molly Ringwald and whatnot. But he's ha- this is what he wants to do. Remember, this was the guy that lost his mind at one point in New Japan because he was so depressed that he lost the IWGP title that he was carrying around balloons and had his long trunks on and was out there. So Okada's got a goofy side, and he's getting paid a lot right now to do that and not killing his body. So there you go. Look, and the fans are responding to him. That That's also the bottom line of this is AEW fans have not lost anything seemingly when it comes to Okada. They absolutely love every time he's on screen. Well, I think the question we got to ask is, uh, how little is he going to do in blood and guts? You know what I mean? Well, I think more than that, the important thing is, and and this is really important, is he willing to, and I believe he will be, willing to pull the trigger and really go when the time comes? Because if he hasn't got a major top program currently, this is good use for him and save the blow the doors off the place and really shock people when there is an important singles program. Well, we're going to find out. I got people saying he's going to go all out next week and I'll bet he doesn't. It's a multi-person match. What's the point? Like there's, there's plenty. I mean, just like let Darby go all out, you know, he's gonna. So, uh, I wonder how long it takes before they get to Okada and hangman, because remember their interaction last week when hangman was banging on the door and got in Okada's face. Maybe he doesn't like new friend, and that could be something down the line as well, too, when it's time to either flip Page back or make Okada really go all out with him as a baby face. I can't believe I'm going to read this text, but this person says, Hogan is only speaking because he heard Trump might run against Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. I've faced Kamala before. Every single one of these text messages has to do with Hogan. Apparently, Hogan will be speaking at the RNC tonight. I wonder if he'll claim he single-handedly ended Desert Storm when he beat Slaughter at WrestleMania 7. People seem to be into this uh, this thing. Uh, see Stan watch watch, watch the TNA roof. tonight instead. <laughs> yeah, what's going on with TNA tonight? What's coming uh, up this weekend? There is a tag team title match. The I don't know if we can call them the Hardy Boys. I suppose I can here, but not on our show. Uh, the brothers Jeff and Matt Hardy are challenging the system for the tag team titles. Tonight. I mean, shouldn't you technically be able to call them the Hardy Brothers? Because they are the Hardy Brothers. Yes, I think there's just the issues. You you can't uh, use Hardy Boys, especially with a Z, I would imagine. The Hardy Men. Or a Z for you American folk. Hmm. 
So then this wait, weekend... Wait, the Z is different in Canada? It's a Z. A Z? Yes. What? Like Hardee's, yes. Dudley's, Dudley's... XYZ is the pronunciation of the letters in no, Canada. No, it's not. What, what are you doing? It is in Canada. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z? Yes. No. And in Canada, in Montreal, sold out Slammiversary Saturday. Where we've got the uh, six six way world title match. We've got uh, PCO in a title match. Speedball Mike Bailey, I believe, and uh, it's going to be a big show. Slamversary is sold out, and then we're taping again on Sunday. So if you can't get into Slamversary, show up on Sunday. Money if you get the concession stand, there's milk in a bag. Uh, depends on what province you're in. R- really, that's yes. that's a regional thing. Uh, Ontario, you buy milk in a bag, but not in Alberta. What? They sell it in bags. You have a plastic jug that you put the bag in and you snip the tip off it. Milk is sold. It is sold in cartons as well, but in Alberta, it's in plastic jugs. A bladder. You're trying to sell me on going to Canada for this Slammiversary weekend with that news? I don't even know the proper alphabet. Are there any other letters that I'm saying wrong as an American? I don't know, but you have to speak French, too. They yeah, there's a whole other there. language in Montreal. I don't think milk is your concern. <laughs> I, I Montreal li- nightlife might be. I like milk. <laughs> Who would your dream wrestling match be between? Any era, any wrestler. I would love to see Abe Lincoln versus Nick Gage. Oh, Lincoln <laughs> would saw that guy to pieces. What do you think, Lance? Well, if I'm going to pick a dream one, it's going to be me versus someone. Um, I would I would take a, a prime Ricky Steamboat as a baby face against me as a heel, and I'd be a very happy man. Wow. Wow. That Ricky Steamboat wasn't too bad. He was a pretty gosh darn good baby face, say, let me tell you. God, that match, we were watching uh, WWF Challenge, and it was, uh, oh, God, who was it that he was facing? Uh, I mean, he'd been around, like, forever, dating back to... You know, like the JWA. It was um, uh, Tiger Chung Lee. They had a Tiger Chung Lee Ricky Steamboat match on Challenge. And, I mean, it was like, it was just slightly above the level of being a, a squash match. But, like, they gave Tiger Chung Lee some stuff. And it was the first match that Ricky Steamboat had had since he got uh, hit in the uh, neck. The throat. With the ring bell, the throat. Which, by the way, still to this day, I'm so absolutely blown away. We went back to watch this, okay, in 2024. And it was the angle that got Vinny into wrestling. It was the first thing he ever saw. That's why Vinny is doing what he does today, was that angle. Everybody remembers this angle. And what does everybody remember about it? That they called it his larynx, right? Yes. That's what everybody remembers about Crushed this. Crushed his larynx, yes. We went back and we watched every single show from the day they showed it on Challenge for six weeks afterwards recapping it and everything. And during that entire time, every last single person said larynx. Except literally there was like one, it might have been Gene Okerlund, one time on one show said larynx the entire rest of the time i was like did i grow up in like an alternate universe with everybody else and now we're on some different timeline where that never happened you remember the saturday night main event is my bet and i'm guessing vince said larynx on saturday night main event and that's the bigger show that everyone remembers no one remembers challenge they remember saturday night's main event it might That's have been. wrote it up in the magazines. I, I remember it being larynx. I could look, you know, but that's... Well, I don't think I, they would have written in a magazine. They would have spelled well, it right, I think. I don't know. But it, it, that was one that I remember as well, too. The whole angle when Bruno San Martino going after Savage in the locker room, which brought Bruno out of retirement for a little while. They'll put some mustard on the hot dog, and then, you know, Bruno Excuse goes me? after him. That's what he said. <laughs> Finished him off. Well, all I know is, anyway, to get to the point, it's Ricky Steamboat's return from the from the bell against Tiger Chung Lee. And first off, I mean, they locked up, and I could have watched it on a loop for the rest of my life. It was the greatest lockup you've ever seen. And then they're doing this match, and, like, Ricky's running wild. It's all great. And all of a sudden, 
Bam! Tiger Chung Lee with the chop, the knife edge to the throat. And, and all of a sudden, Savage is like, Ugh! and he can't breathe. And he's selling like he's going to die because he got hit. And then there's a super kick to the throat. And he's like, he's practically dying in the ring. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is a big freaking deal right here. His first match back, he may be killed. And neither announcer, Grill and Bobby, they're busy arguing about Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and the trophy. <laughs> and they completely, totally ignored that Ricky Steamboat is dying before their eyes. And then, of course, he makes a big comeback and he hits a high cross. Okay. And not only does he hit a high cross off the top rope, that's like the finish is a high cross, but it is the easiest, lightest. He didn't even touch Tiger Chung Lee with this high cross. And I, I absolutely loved, loved this match. Almost as much as MJF and Osprey, frankly. But anyway, I don't know what the point was. Oh, yeah, you wanted to wrestle him. Yes. Yeah. I would have my match against Tiger Chung Lee. <laughs> That's who I'd want my match to be against. And you'll never and I'd be a baby again, face, even though I hate it.